Now, in conducting consensus research, and indeed any research, there is going to be bias. Now, bias is a particular concern in consensus research because of the nature of um, the opinion-based processes involved in collecting the data. So there are a range of different um, techniques and types of bias that can occur in consensus research. So the first of these is collective unconscious. Now, essentially, we may have an um, unexpressed perspective that society generally has around certain issues where we simply haven't considered other alternatives because it just hasn't occurred to us. Of course, we've always thought about issues in a particular way and we haven't considered other alternatives. So this is a difficult one to overcome. And it's one of the reasons why we rely upon experts because experts generally have applied themselves to looking at a range of possibilities around an issue that the general population hasn't necessarily done so. So um, essentially, you want your participants to try as much as they can to come up with diverging ideas around an issue, even if it's not necessarily the ones that they fully agree with, but that they have considered these other possibilities. Now, the next type of um, bias is the contrast effect. Now, essentially, this is where other stronger um, options impact upon our perspectives around other options. So, for example, if we're looking at um, mobile phones and we start off with looking at the issue of um, bullying and suicide in relation to mobile phones. Fairly emotive and quite um, uh, affecting strong reactions. And then we come to the question about the educational application of mobile phones in schools. Because of that previous association with quite dramatic effects of mobile phones, we are less likely to be positive towards mobile phone use in education. If, however, we started with looking at mobile phones in schools and then looked at the issues of bullying and potential issues around suicide and, and so forth, we may have a very different um, ranking of the issues related to mobile phones. Now, the next type of bias has to do with um, human beings' neglect of probability. It's the reason why the gambling industry makes so much money. Uh, for example, you might have presented um, in the data that you provide your participants, the fact that for the last 10 times um, this technology has been used, it has failed to produce any effective results. But we would expect it to be 50-50 as to whether or not it produces effective results or ineffective results. So looking at that, many people would say, okay, if it's the last 10 times it hasn't produced a result and it's 50-50, then the next time it's almost certain to produce a positive result. When in reality, it's still exactly 50-50, regardless of what's happened previously. So our understanding of probability is often lacking and some people that can often distort people's perspectives. Now, another approach is called the von Restorff um, bias. Now, this is a game where we tend to relate to the most extreme examples in relation to an issue. So again, looking at uh, mobile phone users, we may relate it to the issues of suicide, when in reality it might only be 0.00% of um, that occurring. The course of the extreme nature of it, it tends to influence our uh, opinions much more so than the true rate or the true impact of the actual um, technology or effect or whatever we're looking at. Now, another bias is called the my side bias. This is a game where we tend to have a particular affinity towards a 
a technology or perspective. Let's say you're really interested in virtual reality and you've been exploring that. And now you're on a panel where you're asked to rank a whole lot of technologies, one of which is, well, let's say, looking at the positives and negatives of virtual reality. Because you've got that affinity towards it, you would tend to highlight and come up with positive outcomes for virtual reality and would be less likely to bring up and highlight negative outcomes. So, whereas someone that didn't have any particular interest in virtual reality would be more likely to have equal perspectives on each. And another effect is the recency effect. This is where, where things have happened recently, they tend to dominate our thoughts. So again, um, let's take the example of suicide in mobile phones. If an event like that had happened recently, that would be much more likely to be front of your mind and influencing your decisions than if it had if there have been no events like that for the last five years. So things that have occurred recently can have an impact. Um, it can also um, relate to the primacy effect, which is another bias um, where we it relates to when we're asked questions. So let's say again we're asking uh, questions about educational technologies. And the first one we talk about is adaptive learning. So it starts at A. Um, it's then fresh in our mind. And as we then go and look at other technologies, and let's say we get to a later one, um, virtual reality, our, the primacy of the, the first one that we came across, adaptive learning, will tend to give it a slightly higher um, influence over our decision making than something that's come later in the study, such as virtual reality. And then finally, there is the, the dominance uh, bias. This is where certain individuals will dominate um, the decision making process. It may be through their rank, their, um, they might be the employer, they might be um, well respected and have a lot of um, research papers published. They might be uh, have a older. They might be male, or they might be white. There could be a whole range of factors that allow individuals to dominate others in decision making processes, and it's one of the main reasons why we use anonymous uh, voting and anonymous discussions or anonymous um, processes in the Delphi techniques and many of the other consensus methods, because it can have such a distorting effect over the decision making processes. So there's some of the biases that are inherent in um, conducting a consensus research such as the Delphi study and we'll discuss these further in the tutorial.